neurosurgeon. He's going to be talking about uh, his experience in, in, in uh, IV. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to speak, and it's great to see everybody out here. Um, I really appreciate all the work that you do for sometimes the most difficult and the most vulnerable group of patients. I am by no means an expert. Uh, I'd like to hear all these stories about what you can achieve and what you can get to, and I really appreciate the stories from Dr. Neville about how he started. I'm just going to talk about my situation because uh, it's a little bit different because I've been dropped into the center of something in that we have a well-established wound care clinic. I've done no work but show up, and they have done a lot of things that surround all these topics, so I, I will not take any credit for that. Um, and I'll show you what I've been up to uh, in the province. So I was well trained to deal with high-end aortic work, bypasses, endovascular surgery. And when I came out two years ago, I was ready to go, ready to do all these fantastic procedures. But what I found is that I was spending a, a very extensive amount of my time dealing with this. And Although I was well prepared for the vascular side of things, I was woefully unprepared for the uh, amount of time, the amount of energy, and effort that's required to take care of these patients. So as I was dealing with this, I, I would give my ideas to my senior colleagues. And if they said it was a good idea, all right, I'm on the right track. If it's a great idea, that was gonna ge generate multiple emails, a few meetings, I would definitely piss somebody off, and I'm now on a committee. So, I've learned these lessons over the past two years. So, as I joined my practice, it wasn't just learning how to deal with vascular surgery, but there was also political upheaval in the healthcare system. Our nine health districts turned into four. And when I showed up, they said, congratulations, you're the Eastern Zone Vascular Surgeon, based out of Halifax, where that star is. So what I do every two weeks is I fly from Halifax to Sydney, to the regional hospital, and I see between 80 and 100 patients in a day and a half. So when you ask a patient, would you like to show up at six o'clock in the morning for me to see you, or, or would you like to drive nine hours? They're very receptive to coming in that early and well into the night. The janitors turned off the lights on me one night. <laughs> so local politics, I'm gonna get into that, and when I asked Dr. Casey if I should read anything about this symposium, he said, no, just tell them what you're doing, right? Again, a setup from a peer. So you also need to lower the population, and that's what our, our, our colleague from Virginia has been talking about, geography. I'm only on the simplistic side of this. So I went to Taurus Cape Breton. There's a Cabot Trail on the left side, lots of lobster, Highland dancers. This is what everybody sees when they come for a vacation. The patients I'm dealing with, however, is from industrial Cape Breton. Background in coal mining, fishing, resource heavy, uh, salt of the earth people uh, that have gone through difficult times. So you need to know what you're dealing with. So at the same time, healthcare became a hot button issue during the political election. So these are the types of titles in the local paper that I got to receive every morning when I showed up. They said, Did you see the K Breton Post? I said, No, I uh, didn't see it today. So these were the types of things that were being said. I just kept my head down and kept seeing patients. I did not want to be interviewed by the CBC. I wanted to work within the system and see what I could accomplish. And I had no idea what I was doing. So again, more and more. So this was my favorite one. So uh, with the change, uh, this was one of my more senior colleagues who decided to do an interview at the, in the Cape Breton Post. So traditionally in Cape Breton, if you wanted the town to survive, you needed a church a school and a hospital. And when you try to mess with any one of those three, there's upheaval. So my interest in rural care, not only was I assigned to be the Eastern Zone, but these are the types of responses I got from my patients. Uh, that's a curse word. Um, and they were not happy to travel to see me when I'm not going to make them better, or I'm gonna support them through their smoking cessation. So I'm trying to deliver care at as close to home as possible so that the socioeconomic burden is less. So identifying local champions. So before you go stomping through and get called into a meeting about you said something bad, you try to figure out who's willing to help you, how they can help you. Uh, the first two there, the two general surgeons that have set up their own wound care clinic. 
I still call them sir, I show up, I, whatever they ask of me, I perform because they've been at it for several decades and I, I needed to enlist their political help as well. Experience nursing procedure rooms, for North is the public private, how much does it cost from one to the other, how do we provide it? There's actually a full department in one of the peripheral hospitals that I got associated with, so I was able to send people there. The Victoria Order of Nurses, they're the people on the ground that see wounds day in and day out. If they call me, I answer the phone. If they send me a fax, I send it immediately back. They want that support so that they aren't hung out to dry with these, with these patients. Uh, and then you get you know, allies in trying to make change. And then anybody interested, essentially anybody who would make eye contact with me. I was recruiting. Oh, you're interested. No, I was just uh, going to ask you where the washroom was. So. <laughs> when you approach uh, the administration, are you using what we've provided so far? Not only the space, but also the technologic advances. So this is a storage room. It wasn't this bad. I just did it for the presentation. But you can't trick me. I found the virtual care camera uh, in one of these types of places. And again, now I'm part of the Provincial Virtual Care Committee. Um, and using all of these things to deliver health care that's timely, appropriate, and supporting <coughs> those patients through the very complex system that we're dealing with. Who knows the mission statement of Wounds Canada or their own health care uh, district or their hospital? A lot of time is spent in those mission statements, and when you can use it against them, it's great. So, <laughs> innovation is part of that. So I, I catered to how they wanted to change, and I gave them the credit that you've already taken the step. Now I want to use this to provide patient care, and you can take the credit for this innovation that I'm trying to do. How do you convince them economically that this is an important uh, thing? Now, if you, ever, if you ever want to get in a conversation with an accountant, go to a dinner party, talk about tax law, and say, you're going to save lives if you tell me about this tax law. Nobody ever talks to them about their job, right? So this is the Nova Scotia income tax law. You can claim up to 3% or more once it gets to $1,637 or 3% of your income. So me, by going to them, I save 600 to $800 by the time they pay for gas, go get the hotel, pay for meals, and claim that on their income tax. So although this is a very fancy tax book, this is how I presented it to the district director of operational management. One million dollars. They really like that. Now that isn't fun, but it at least gets their attention that you're not just taking money, but you're also providing money back to them, which they really enjoy. <laughs> and this is another part of the economics. So if you go into your EHS, how much travel is sent by institution to institution or from home, long-term care facilities, if you can provide that care closer, this is the amount of money that you can save. Now 80% of that is supplemented. So instead of, I do about five to 10 inpatient consults per time on there, so that saves up to about $8,000. So more than enough pays for my budget to get there and get back. How do you convince politicians? They like to look good on the left. They don't like to look bad. So those two guys are in a good old fashioned sit-in in Glace Bay, K. Breton. I played basketball with both of them. They went to high school with me. I might have texted them and I said, you're never good at any other job, you better be careful to try to sort out healthcare. And you have to remember, and I really enjoy the statistics and all the things that you're, you're showing that we're doing on the right track, but you can't uh, argue with a feel-good story. So a feel-good story can trump some of those statistics, whether it's for the good or for the bad. And the facts can sometimes get pushed to the side. I wasn't supposed to bring up politics in this type of arena, but thought it fit. So again, I didn't read much about setting up a wound care clinic. I just knew what I was dealing with. So this hub and spoke idea, and this is what I took, although I didn't know about that model until I came here. So this is Nova Scotia. We have the major wound care center, the Cadillac that was set up by my senior colleagues who are doing a great job, and that's where I go. So I go from one to the other, four and a half hours of driving or flight. So in Cape Breton, I have all these things. Infectious diseases have just joined the wound care clinic, which I'm very excited about. And then this is the one in, in 
Halifax, all of the things that we have at our fingertips, but the wait list is three to six months to get into it at times. I'm hoping that dermatology also joins us, but if you talk with those with dermatologists, sometimes they say I have better things to do. Uh, I asked my wife, who's a dermatologist, she said I'd get back to you. <laughs> it's been a year. Uh, and social work. Social work is such, such a key component of not only the plan, but executing that plan. So what else do I have to this wild wheel? So these are my outreach to my outreach clinic. So I go to Sydney and then I drive two hours or two and a half hours to the west coast of the island. Shetty Camp is very French. Uh, I don't use my French immersion skills very much because they laugh. Um, and I own them like, I'm not going to take a look at it. I go there in the summertime. It's very nice. <laughs> but again, it's providing that care closely, knowing that they're important enough for you to take the care to them. In the Maritimes, we also have a vascular surgeon that covers all of PEI. They also travel to Halifax. He has all of these things as well, and he runs a wound care clinic. But he comes and does call and all the surgery out of Halifax. We have vascular, vascular general surgeons in uh, Kenville, and they travel to Yarmouth. And right now, there's no real connection with us. That's coming up. And then we have a general surgeon in Truro. And what I'm trying to establish is these connections so that if you have that high, uh, high care moon clinic, you should see them once or twice and then you deliver them back to the periphery. So the peripheral doctors are doing an excellent job. And the last thing they want to hear is that a patient come back and say, I don't think you did as much as you could have to save my leg. And when we give them the stamp of, not, not that they need the stamp of approval, but when you say you're on the right track, you're doing the right thing, here's a few suggestions. Thank you for helping us take care of these patients. It, it, it allows them to carry on and feel uh, valued. So these are my, vert so I was gonna start virtual health to follow up. I think the initial assessment's critical, but then to follow up with a nurse. I was all set to go about three months ago, had the nurse in place, had the stuff ready to go, had my secretary trained, I was trained, all set to go, and they said, you don't have a clerk to register them at the hospital. I said, well, how hard could that be? So that was three months ago. Um, just for me to be able to dictate. So again, there's lots of little things that you just don't know is required until you get there and ready to go. So I'm gonna start that in two weeks now. I have all that in place. So I also need to follow outcomes. I'm gonna ask for resources to do all these things, and these are my very simplistic way of looking at it. Uh, patient questionnaires, and that's how I'm gonna do it. So key points, local care, local politics, local patients. Um, needs assessment, so use what they already have so before you demand something else. Uh, interested health professionals, it doesn't matter who that is, they are valued, <coughs> the of delivering that care. Um, proposal for additional resources, so SBAR is what it's called, I've learned all these things. Uh, outcome measures, and are just another warning, you're gonna be on committees. Thank you very much.